Now, aside from operationalization or effective operationalization, another uh, characteristic of a more advanced IPS system and something that you might want to look for uh, has to do with overall increase of awareness and overall increase of awareness, as well as um, capabilities for being able to visualize, so visualization of, of IPS data. And the, these things obviously go hand in hand. And so by awareness, I, I, mean, I typically mean things like uh, obviously being able to understand more network protocols, uh, being able to understand maybe more application payloads, uh, but also maybe more subtle things. For example, uh, being able to ins inspect SSL traffic. Uh, and this comes up because a lot of times web traffic is encrypted, uh, and the, the most common protocol for being able to encrypt web traffic is something called SSL, or Secure Sockets Layer. And, and I won't go into details, maybe I'll do a future video that talks more about SSL. But it turns out you can, there are some techniques for being able to uh, decrypt SSL traffic and then re-encrypt it. It's, it's not necessarily easy to do, but it, it provides the, the device with maybe more uh, insight into what's actually going on within the context of a particular network. Then aside from SSL inspection, there may be kind of more broad awareness, not just of traffic going into a network, but what's called uh, network behavioral analysis. So network behavior, network behavior analysis. Okay, and uh, this is sometimes abbreviated as NBA. Okay, and the idea here is that oftentimes when, when you look at an enterprise network or any type of network, typical devices might look at what's going into the network. So maybe, you know, imagine you've got the internet here and you've got traffic that's coming in uh, from the internet and maybe to a particular enterprise network. And typically devices that are interested in network security kind of reside at this layer where they'll actually look at the traffic coming in from the outside and then make a determination about whether that traffic should be allowed in the network or not. But oftentimes, they may ignore all the interesting traffic that's happening within a network itself. And oftentimes, you know, what might happen is somebody might, uh, they may go home and, and uh, maybe they, they let their teenager use their laptop and, and they come back into the office the next day and their laptop is now, let's say, infected with a threat. They've now basically just walked in, walked right past the perimeter into the actual enterprise network and entered the actual corporate network. Uh, and as a result, may now potentially risk infecting other users within that network and, and potentially compromise the entire network as a whole. But if you just relied on perimeter type defenses, you, you would not be able to protect these types of threats. And so you do need uh, to have some awareness of what's going on inside the enterprise network. And on obviously you would also want to have things like uh, endpoint security software, things of that nature to help you uh, deal with situations in which malware has actually gotten through or in which there's maybe some other type of infiltration within the context of a network. Uh, and then aside from that, I mean, I think the, the other aspect of awareness and visualization uh, has to do with reporting. So I think having uh, reports and dashboards and that sort of thing, and, and we shouldn't discount uh, this aspect. I mean, it, it's not maybe as technical as being able to, let's say, catch a threat using some sophisticated signature, but ultimately the reports and dashboard are what somebody might use to basically act intelligently on the data that they receive. And so it's important to have reports and, and dashboards that provide interesting and, and actionable intelligence. And then there's, a, there's actually a bit more aside from that. I think another aspect of awareness and visualization would involve uh, directory integration. Uh, so directory integration. And what does this mean? Well, typically, when you think about it, a network device will have awareness about the network, and it's going to think about things like IP addresses and, and things of that nature. But in reality, if you want to make use of that data, if you want to make use of those insights, Typically, whatever IP address you find on the network, that actually has to be mapped back to a device, which in turn will be mapped to an actual user, an actual human being. And in order to be able to affect or put good policies into effect, uh, you have to think at the user level, not just at the IP level. Uh, on the one hand, though, a typical, a typical IPS device or even a firewall, anything of that nature, might tell you a lot about the IP address, but it may not give you enough to actually go and translate that to an actual user, uh, which is where you really need to be doing the, the more forward thinking and, and more uh, rigorous work. But if you do have directory integration, then you can actually figure out, uh, you, can, you can take network traffic and network flow traffic and alerts that are generated by an IPS, and with good directory integration, you'll be able to actually tie that back to a physical user uh, against whom you can then put that policy into effect. And that allows you then to go ahead and, and uh, and really make a difference in terms of a, in a more broad sense. And I think I'm actually going to keep going on this video. I, I want to talk about the next point, which I think is related to this point, and that really is around 
not just awareness and visualization, but ultimately around being able to take action. So action ability is really critical. Um, it's not just enough to have uh, action, action ability. There you go. So it's not just enough to have good awareness and visualization. You have to be able to act on that awareness and visualization. And one way you can do that is through directory integration. So I think actually directory integration might be better suited under the category of action ability. Uh, but beyond just that, you, you may also want to look at things like um, impact assessment. So for example, uh, and I talked about this earlier, let's say you have a threat or there's some malicious traffic on the network, but for some or other reason, it doesn't actually apply to a particular device. Like maybe the traffic is indicative of a Windows vulnerability, but the systems on that network may all be Linux systems. And so obviously, even though the traffic is kind of in and of itself malicious, it's not going to be able to do anything useful. And so it's, it's kind of a low impact threat. Uh, from one company's perspective. And, and as a result, it's really important to be able to prioritize what you need to take action on. So these dashboards and reports, you know, it's not just about having that data and about visualization, but ultimately that has to be, lead to, to effective action against those pieces of information. And that's really what actionability is all about. And ultimately all this, I, I, I kind of think of this loop between operationalization and increased awareness, being able to take action. Uh, and, and in general, I, I kind of think of this as, as, as an interesting loop that leads back to just improved agility. Improved agility. And that's very important from a security perspective. It's not just important to have technology in place uh, that can detect a certain set of threats, but that technology has to be able to evolve effectively, evolve rapidly, use uh, other interesting data streams uh, to be able to make protection an ongoing thing, not just a one-time event.